Hello and welcome. This is International Master Alex Astane and today we're going to be covering the Italian uh, game or the Italian opening. The Italian opening begins with the moves pawn to e4, pawn to e5, knight to f3 and after black's response knight to c6 which defends the e5 pawn, here white develops his king's bishop on f1 and he brings it to the c4 square. This is one of the oldest and most popular openings in chess. It is also uh, very important because it's both very popular at the club level and also right up to the very, very highest uh, levels. The Italian opening is known as the Italian opening as it was popularized by many of the very, very old uh, chess players of the past. And in fact, we have many games, well, some of the earliest recorded chess games were recorded by uh, an Italian, Giacchino Greco, uh, and we will see later on in our series how some of the variations in the Italian game are actually named after him, uh, specifically the Greco Gambit. Now, in this introductory video, I want to show you the three major options that black has. We're dividing it into three categories. So the first category is all the variations that arise after the move bishop to c5. This symmetrical option for black is uh, extremely natural and was therefore the first, the most popular response uh, originally um, in, the, in the beginning of this opening. Now, besides bishop to c5, there's an equally popular option, which is the move knight to f6. This move is known as the two knights uh, defense. And although it's equally popular, the types of positions that arise from it are very different in character. So these are the first two categories and that's where we will be focusing. However, there is a third category, which is all the other options that uh, are available to black, which are minor options. And they're worth knowing if you want to play this as white, or perhaps they're worth knowing if you want to surprise your opponent, you don't want to play the either of the two major lines. So options in that category include the move bishop to e7, the so-called Hungarian defense, pawn to h6, which is the, called the anti-fried liver defense, Pawn to f5 is the Rousseau gambit. And uh, other options also include the move pawn to d6, which we will see in our model games section as from here, if black is not careful, he can fall into the well-known legal trap. Now, to go back to the original move that we discussed, bishop to c5, this is the classical uh, variation. From here, we will examine various uh, systems. So, Traditionally, white played the move pawn to c3. And the intention with this move is to play uh, the pawn to d4. Black has various ways of meeting this move, but the one where we will be focusing the most principled reply is knight to f6, ignoring the threat of pawn to d4, confident that black will be able to deal with this move effectively. Now, in this situation, uh, white historically would play the move pawn to d4 and here after pawn takes d4, c takes d4, black would give this check bishop to b4 and here with a move like knight to c3 we are into Greco gambit territory. After many many years the players realized that these positions actually don't pose many problems for black at all. So instead White, rather than pushing the pawn to d4, started to simply defend the pawn on e4 with the move pawn to d3. And this sets up more Giocopianissimo positions, the very quiet game positions. I should add that we're also going to be covering a twist on the move pawn to d4. Because after e takes d4, as we just mentioned, if c takes d4, it turns out that this check solves pretty much all of black's problems. So because of this, white started to play an in-between move, an intermezzo move, and that is the move pawn to e5. So this is also a, a very, very big topic that we'll be covering in more detail later on. So now we have looked at the Gioco Pianissimo and the Gioco Piano. Let's go back to the starting position of the classical variation, which is after bishop to c5. And here we're going to also mention, we're going to discuss 
this move pawn to b4. It may seem like a very strange move to simply give up a pawn apparently for nothing, but the idea is that if black captures, for example, with the knight, then the knight is no longer defending the central pawn on e5, and this can have consequences. If, on the other hand, black captures with the bishop, then the bishop is no longer on the long g1 to a7 diagonal, and importantly, white is able to play the move pawn to c3, striking at the bishop, forcing black to spend more time, and then follow it up with the move pawn to d4 later on for a quick central play and potentially some great attacking options. We also notice that after the move c3, this diagonal opens up and so white can bring his queen quickly into play. This is the move b4. The name of such a move is the Evans Gambit. It's named after the Welsh sea captain uh, William Davies Evans, who first employed it in, I believe, the 19th century. Now, black actually does not have to take the pawn, so we will also examine the move bishop to b6. Therefore, we have two variations. If the pawn is captured, it should be captured by the bishop, that's the best move for black. This is the so-called Evans Gambit accepted, and bishop to b6 is, unsurprisingly, the Evans Gambit declined. Besides this, we're also going to be covering the natural move kingside castle for white. Here, black has several responses, but the most common response for black is knight to f6, continuing his development. And here we have a very interesting additional gambit. We just looked at the Evans gambit. Now we can consider the move pawn to d4, which again presents black a myriad of options. Pawn takes d4, bishop takes d4, or knight takes d4. And this is the so-called Deutz gambit. So it's a very interesting gambit as well, and we'll look at this in more depth later on. Finally, in this position, if instead of kingside castling, white decides to continue his queenside development, this is a little bit less popular. The move knight to c3 will lead to what is known typically after the black's response, knight f6, what is known as the four knights variation of the Italian game. This is generally less popular because as we've already seen, white usually likes to give this square to reserve it for the pawn so that the pawn can push onto c3, control the d4 square and fight for the center. Nevertheless, we will take a quick look at the move knight to c3 in the future. This covers all of the possibilities, all of the major possibilities for white after black's response of bishop to c5. So that is the classical uh, line. Let's take a look at what can happen after the other popular choice, which is knight to f6, the two knights defense. This move has the advantage of immediately attacking the pawn on e4. However, it does have a, a major uh, potential disadvantage, which is that the g5 square is now available to white's knight. In the variations after bishop to c5, this is not the case because the queen controls this diagonal. Therefore, after knight f6, we will look at this possibility, knight to g5, striking at this weak point on f7. This is the so-called knight attack. Now, black can respond in a variety of ways. By far the main move is pawn to d5. After pawn to d5, white will capture, and here beginners fall victim to this trap all the time. After knight takes d5, the very natural resp response, the very natural recapture of the pawn, there are tactical problems, and white here can continue with knight takes f7, which is known as the fegatello attack or the fried liver attack. We will take a look at this and explain why it is that white can get away and indeed profit from a peace sacrifice like this so early on in the game. Additionally, white can actually play the move pawn to d4, and this is the lolly attack. So this is another option that we will be looking at. Therefore, black doesn't usually capture on d5. So instead of capturing knight takes d5, black usually plays 
knight to a5. And this is this somewhat unusual looking move is the so-called polario defense, and that's the main line. However, it's not the only option that we'll be looking at. We will also consider the strange looking pawn to b5, a gambit. Black has already sacrificed one pawn, his knight is under attack, and yet he offers a second pawn. This move is the Ulvestad variation of the two knights defense. Let's go back to this position here. It turns out that black doesn't even need to defend the pawn. He has the option of bishop to c5, a very, very aggressive move known as the Traxler counterattack or the Traxler counter gambit. So this is going to be another chapter in our series. This marks the end of the variations after knight to g5. White can also continue much more slowly, and this is the main line these days, and defend the pawn on e4. This is known as the modern bishop's opening, and this is the position that you'll see most modern grandmasters playing. We'll discuss the typical maneuvers that arise in this position in a video later on. The very final option against the two knights defense, we've already seen knight to g5, the knight attack on f7, pawn to d3, defending the pawn on e4, and activating the long diagonal for the bishop on c1. Finally, we see the more aggressive pawn to d4. This move is known as the open variation, as white seeks to open the center up very, very quickly. And from here, after black's main move, pawn takes d4, in this position here, we have arrived via the two knights move order at the scotch gambit. This is an incredibly popular uh, opening choice at the club level because it leads to some swashbuckling attacking chess. Now I should say this is not the only order by which you can arrive at the so-called scotch gambit. In fact, let's go back to this very very starting position and I will show you a very common move order, alternative move order. e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, and now after the move pawn to d4, we have what's known as the scotch game. Black now captures on d4, and rather than capture the pawn, white plays bishop to c4. He's not interested in recapturing the pawn. And so here, after black goes knight to f6, we see that we have arrived via a different move order, via the scotch order, at what's known as the scotch gambit. The reason why it's called the scotch gambit is simply because this is the most popular move order by which players arrive at this position. But we, in our series, we're going to examine it from the move order of the two knights defense. So let's go back. We saw this was the position here. e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6 bishop to c4 Italian game, knight f6, two knights defense, pawn to d4, open game, and now after e takes d4, we are in the scotch gambit lines. What are we going to show in the scotch gambit? We're going to talk about two major options and one minor. We're going to talk about knight to g5, the so-called Peru variation, attacking on f7, and then we're going to be looking at the two major uh, parts are e5, the advanced variation immediately attacking the knight on f6, or castle, which offers black the possibility of taking a second central pawn. And with that, we conclude all of the variations that we're going to be examining in the two knights' defense. There is only one last thing to say for this overview of the Italian game, and that is that if we go back to the starting position, we mentioned at the beginning of the video that after e4, e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, bishop to c4, and here we have some rare options. We have bishop to e7 is the Hungarian defense, f5 is the Russo gambit, and we have h6. This move is the so-called anti-fried liver defense to protect g5, and we even have the move knight to d4, which 
offers this pawn on e5 and this is known as the shilling hostage gambit or the blackburn shilling gambit. So we will also look at these rare options that you must be prepared for as a white player or if you want to catch your opponent out as a black player then these are uh, good, good possibilities. So that is it as far as the Italian game goes. I realize there's really a lot of material here but it's worth learning from either color because the Italian game is currently the most popular choice by white in e4, e5 positions at the very very highest levels of chess and also at the amateur level. So if you invest the time, if you take the time to learn this either as white or as black or as both then for sure it will pay off over the coming uh, months and years in your chess career. So hopefully you will join us in this journey uncovering the Italian game and well we look forward to seeing you in our first detailed video where we will begin examining the move bishop to c5, the classical variation in much more detail. So see you then.